160. He's gone. What's up, guys? Welcome to day two of the drift track build. Um, the shipping gods have decided to frown upon me, and my welder doesn't get here until Monday, and today is a Saturday, so we are still stuck tack welding things together. But uh, we are going to make some progress. This right here is our 6.5 uh, horsepower Harbor Freight motor. First thing we're going to do today is we're going to get it out of the box. We're going to get it attached to that big piece of C-channel I have. Set it outside let it run for about half an hour. With these uh, Chinese made engines, and this applies to the engines, the power washers, the air compressors, pretty much anything that's going to be um, a motor and it's going to be cast. With the Asian stuff, you really, it's, a lot of it is good quality. But the casting tends to be very poor, and what that means is that you need to fill it up with oil, let it run for about 20-30 minutes, all the burrs and stuff on the inside get knocked down, all the, all the dirt and stuff gets sucked up into the oil, flush the oil, it's going to come out looking like you spun a bearing, um, you have it, it's fine, uh, and then refill it with oil on the air compressors, I usually do it two times, on this thing I'll probably just do it once, um, but it's important that we do that, so... Let's get this thing unboxed, fill it up with oil, fill up some gas, get it mounted, um, and get it running. And then while that's going, we're going to tack together our, our rear frame and, and cut out some gussets as well with our plasma cutter. Then I got the axle back here, and I'll walk you guys through how the axle works. And um, we'll, we'll get everything tacked in place and basically get it ready for a full weld. And then once the welder comes in... Um, That'll be part three. I'll weld everything together. Uh, we'll get it kind of um, cleaned up, painted, fitted. That'll probably be part three. Uh, then there might be a part four that'll either be a reveal or I'll do something that goes through all the little things, the, the thrall connection and all that kind of stuff. Um, and then we will be ready for our vlogger challenge, I think. So let's get this going. So unboxing our Predator, um, right here on top there's normally an instruction manual I've already taken out and read it. <sighs> grab that, grab, so there's a bunch of, a bunch of labels and stuff and whatnot. so we can just grab it by the gas tank, lift it out. This thing's only about 30 or 35 pounds, so it's not real heavy. And put it back up here on the workbench, oops, we fell over, oh. Oh, this is a uh, spark plug tool, I imagine. Um, let's see, is there anything else here in the box? Nope, that's all we get. Now, we're going to get this broken in, but I can already see a problem. See, this has a key right here, and it's tapped for some thread, but I don't know what the thread is, and it doesn't come with a bolt. And what happens is, this clutch right here, actually mounts on here like that and there is a keyway here so this actually mounts on here like that on the keyway and slides all the way on but we really should have a bolt that holds this on so I'll have to figure out what that thread is uh, and get a bolt for it now this is, has two dipsticks I guess yep and there's a little bit of oil in there, but we're going to add some. So as far as kind of anatomy, here's our gas tank. Here is our air filter carburetor. Here is our exhaust. Um, if we go around to the side, this right here is your low oil circuit. Um, I, a lot of people remove it for some reason. I'm going to leave it in place uh, because I would want the engine to turn off if there's low oil. Here's your emergency on and off. Uh, here's your pull starter. Feels nice and healthy. Let's see, what is this shit? Uh, quick start guide. So over here we have, so we want to make sure our fuel is on. We make sure our choke is on start. And this is our th throttle. Um, oh, there we go. So that's our throttle. And we're going to have to get that uh, set up with, with this bad boy here. But for now, um, this is, we'll put it all the way to slow. But we'll set it to about half speed and let it run. So let's see, what else is there? Um, as far as mounting goes, now that we got this on the side, 
These I hope are oil drains, which will make life a little bit easier. But I got, I could have made this. I bought this mounting plate um, for like six bucks uh, because it's just cheaper to get that. And I picked up these bolts the other day. Um, I know they look sort of dainty, but they are actually the right size. The nice thing is this motor makes about six and a half horsepower stock, about eight pound feet of torque at 3,600 RPM. When we remove the limiter from inside this cover, it's going to jump up to about seven horsepower and about nine pound feet of torque at 5,600 RPM, which is where you start getting valve float. If I spend 150 bucks on kind of a hop up kit for this motor, I can get um, about 11 horsepower uh, and about 10 pound feet of torque. Um, but I think that's probably going to be too much for the drift trike. Uh, so we're going to leave it stock for now and then we will upgrade it uh, kind of as needed. So I literally just filled this up with oil and gas. Um, never been started before. So let's see. You want to put this, the choke on, put the fuel on, put the throttle about a third of the way. There we go. Smooth as silk, nice and quiet. Of course, we're probably gonna change that, but give it half an hour. So it rotates counterclockwise, so that's good to know. So here's our axle, and let me walk you through how this works. This distance in here will be 26 inches and will be 12 inches uh, wide to give lots of space for the sprocket. Uh, it's currently zip tied on because I had to go get these bolts uh, yesterday. Obviously this will all be bolted together. But generally the way it works is if you look in there, there's a hub, um, and then there's a lock collar, and then there's this channel. And I have to grind this down a little bit, but this is the block that goes in this channel. And this locks the hubs uh, in here to the rotation of the axle. And then this collar right here will keep this in there. Another small piece will go inside the sprocket here. Um, they locks this and these two collars hold it in place. The bearings are held on by these set screws and these plates right here will be welded on uh, to the frame and these uh, bearing holders are actually what hold the bearings to this. So basically, if I were to lift it up like this, uh, as you can see, this spins really freely. And that's exactly what we want. So. I'm going to go ahead and put together the actual, uh, the actual 26 by 12 frame um, and then we will get these mounted in place uh, and then we'll tack that whole assembly to, uh, to our main frame here. And the nice thing about this is I haven't done the final assembly so I'll take this all apart one more time. But when you take off these, these bolts right here, the axle will just lift up out of the thing so you can service the axle without having to disassemble everything all the time which is nice. All right, so we're just gonna cut our, uh, our pieces here and <coughs> we're just gonna butt weld them together. So here's our ghetto rigged uh, right angle holder. And we're basically just gonna tack this in a couple of places and then go around and do uh, all four corners. And that'll give us a square rigid frame and then we can get the axle out here and get it mounted.
So there's our uh, rear box. We are 29 and just under three quarters, an eighth under three quarters, and 29 and eighth under three quarters. So our nice little box is square. I'm gonna go through and tack up a few more things and grind it all down and clean it up, uh, and then we will mark out the middle and get the uh, clamps off of the axle and uh, get it on here. So here we have this squared up uh, as best you can and it's center line. Um, and basically when you do this, remember, because you're looking at something like this, make sure you draw this line across and leave space up here uh, for this nut to sit. So you can see right there, this nut can sit here because otherwise you won't be able to get that bottom bolt in. So now we are just going to tack this bad boy in and uh, that should do the other side and that should be about it for this uh, frame. So we got all the services cleaned up, we got this straightened out and centered. Uh, so now we're going to just hopefully tack it in. It's a little harder because this is real thick um, and this is real shitty but uh, hopefully we can get it to stay in place. So there's our bicycle frame, there's our axle frame, and now we can just uh, tack this bad boy together. Um, and then basically the frame will be ready for welding and final prep and we can get back to uh, getting the oil out of that motor and getting the governor out. <laughs> So what we're going to be doing is we're going to be removing this cover here to drain all the oil out. Now you have these oil drains, but we want to make sure we get all the metal particles out. So we're going to clean it out on the inside, spray it out, and then we're going to remove the governor. The governor actually sits back here, and basically once it's removed, the engine will rev uh, up to about 5,500 RPM before you get valve float. Now there is a torque spec on these bolts, I don't know what it is offhand, so I just went ahead and marked them with a sharpie so I can put them back uh, the way they were. Um, and other than that, these are 10 millimeters, so we're just going to go ahead and remove them. You can see I got the engine. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and do that. Tilt the engine all the way down. It's nice that nothing's leaking. There's no gas leak, nothing like that. That's a uh, pretty good design. So let's just go ahead and, and uh, break all these bolts loose and take the cover off. And one thing I already did is I uh, removed this, the, the key from the crank. Um, and I just set it aside. It's very important you hang on to that because you're going to need it uh, to get the clutch in place correctly. So there we go. Now we got all those bolts loosened. Uh Get this cover up off of here. And it's just this this get, seal right there on the uh, crank is in pretty good shape. So unfortunately, we tore our little gasket here, but uh, just RTV that back into place in a little bit. So there's kind of the inside. You got a nice little crank bearing. And you can see, I don't know if you can see this yet or not, but there is quite a bit of little silver flake down in the oil. And that's what I was talking about earlier. The other thing that you can do, a lot of people do to make more power, is you can actually, this is your, uh, your camera here. And you can actually remove this guy um, and put in a, a higher duration cam. So, 
down there is a little gear uh, is the little um that little lever arm right there is what uh controls the uh whatchamacallit the governor and that's what we're going to be removing down in there so i'm going to basically turn off the camera here for a second i'm going to drain all the oil out of this into our pan uh clean up this gasket surface and then we can uh, begin removing the governor so here's just kind of another shot you can see out here in the sunlight all of that metal flake that just came out of this engine so normally if you saw that on like a regular engine i would say that you spun a bearing or something of that nature but on these chinese castings that's just the way they start out so i was hoping we could get away with doing this without removing the gas tank but it looks like the gas tank is going to have to come off uh for this to work and that's going to be let's see these two 10 millimeter nuts right here that's it and of course this is our breather line and the actual fuel line is down here and so this is about to probably make a bit of a mess and so here's our fuel line here's our breather line and now this is so what happens is when you're over here and here's your throttle right so that's all the way slow that's all the way fast and what happens is this uh, this lever pushes down and causes the restriction to speed at the top end so now we're gonna be able to disassemble this and basically just remove this whole assembly as far as I understand we remove this whole arm and all of the inside uh, so I'm gonna go go check something real quick and uh, we'll get right to it okay so we're actually going to be removing this entire assembly here and so first you want to remove this little spring right here uh, and this little spring right here this one wants to come out a little easier <laughs> Now we just gotta force this arm up like that, just pop it right off, and that'll let us take that off. So we're just gonna set this whole assembly aside. So now that we have this off, we can just let this sit over here for a moment. I'm gonna set this back over on its side. And now we should be able to finagle this arm out of here. Although we may need to uh, rotate the crank to let us fish that out There we go. So that's come out. Now we got to just remove this entire little gear assembly. And the way you do it, from my understanding, is there is actually a little uh, clip right Oops. So first you take out this little white piece. Then there is a little washer there. We're going to grab our, our magnet to help retrieve that. There we go washer is out and now 
right in there, I hope the camera can catch it, but right there, there is a little circlip, and that circlip is the last piece. Once you get that out, you can uh, reassemble everything. We're going to find a bolt to put in there that's just going to block it up. Um, now, unfortunately, there's not really a clever way of getting this circlip out, at least not one that I know of. And so you just got to have to finagle with it until you get it to pop. Well, after mutilating the absolute fuck all out of this, uh, I realized that if I rotated the crank over, it'd probably be a lot easier. Then it came right out. So once you get that out, there's one more washer back there. That we gotta, we gotta get out. That's it. And so now we just gotta find something to uh, fill this bolt hole with, wash out the inside, and then we can RTV this and uh, put the cover back on. And then later on, if I want to, I can always uh, pull out the cam. And the way that works is if I, there we go, where is it? Right there, those two dots line up. I can just pop out the performance cam and put a new one in later uh, and springs and stuff if I need to. But honestly, I think this is probably going to be enough power all on its own. And it's nice and quiet too. Um, I know that may seem kind of counterproductive, but generally speaking, this sort of behavior takes place in parking lots where you're not really supposed to be at. And so having actually a quiet motor um, can prolong the amount of hooliganism that you can have before the police show up. So I'm gonna get all that gunk out of there. Um, and then I think our engine, oh, then we have to put the, uh, the throttle piece on, but then we should be ready to reassemble and get it all mocked up. All right, so now that we got the uh, side cover on, this is the main throttle piece that I bought. And what this does is your cable goes in here and this acts as your pivot point. And what we do is we loosen this nut. And so you can see um, you have full control here. And right here, so over here is maximum engine speed, minimum engine speed. All right, for something that I thought was gonna be super duper simple, this turned out to be a super huge pain in the ass. So, Look at this crazy linkage that we have to use to run the throttle on this thing. Basically, the cable will come in here and will attach here, and then this will go like that, and that will be your throttle control. Now, we have a throttle stop here, we have a throttle stop here, but just, just to realize what this is. So this linkage connects here, and this is all part of a kit. This is the standard arm that you normally adjust engine speed with right here, and it has... A provision here that I had to make this little piece of metal um, and this right here is the arm that used to control the governor so you have to install reinstall the shaft from the governor cut off the end of it um, put this heavy-duty spring here so it snaps back nicely get good uh, throttle feedback this spring I don't think is actually necessary but it was originally part of the system so I included it and all of that drives this. So basically, this goes in this direction, this goes in the opposite direction, and because of that, we have to have this double arm linkage. So now, the motor is done, I can put the intake and the air filter back on and fill it up with oil, and we'll see if it runs. Um, and we have a idle set screw here as well that I just realized about. So let's get this reassembled and see if I can mock it up uh, and get it at least mocked up on the car. Well, there we go. It's back all assembled. One thing you want to look out for is I had to reset the idle adjustment screw back in here a little bit higher to get it to run. But uh, let me fire up and uh, show you guys the, the difference now that we have a controlled throttle. Oops. So much torque, twist the chassis off the line. Uh, actually, my bolts just fell out, but uh, there you go. So this is done. Um, I had helped my neighbor with some stuff, so I'm pretty exhausted. So I don't think we're getting it mocked up on the frame today. But, uh, well, we'll be, um, 
part three, we'll be getting this motor mounted, getting everything fully welded, and uh, hopefully getting most of it assembled. Unfortunately, it looks like this cable is probably not going to be long enough. It's the one that came with it. So I'm going to have to go and buy some aircraft cable and a few other things. But uh, we're moving right along with this little project.